fuck on. Hello, it's Matthias. And yes, flying in Planet Side 2 this is something that a lot of people have found to be very, very difficult, very frustrating, and a lot of people seem to give up before they really get the hang of it. And this is, of course, mostly for the newer players, the, the, the people that didn't play the game in beta, and uh, the players that didn't really play this game the first few months. So aside from flying being uh, quite difficult in itself and taking a lot of time to really learn how to handle and uh, even longer to master is that most likely when you're flying around in an area where there is uh, a uh, large or medium sized battle you're going to take damage from basically every direction. So now knowing the maps of uh, the three continents that we play on is of course key regardless of uh, what class you're playing and what role you are taking. The thing about aircraft in Planet 2 is that most likely are you going to be seen by your opponents before you can see them. And there are of course a lot of exceptions to that statement. And you as a pilot can of course surprise your opponents, assuming you know where they are and uh, that you know the environment. <laughs> Was yeah. he down? Was he down? <laughs> so easy, just uh, concentrated uh, infantry fire and he's down. So the thing about uh, the ESFs is that they are very vulnerable and they will take damage from all the guns in the game, meaning that it is very tempting for anybody to just shoot at them in order to get the XP points once the ESF goes down. And one of the things that you will see throughout the video, you've already seen a few examples of it, is that I shoot on an ESF and then a few seconds later it crashes and I get the kill or somebody else gets the kill a few uh, seconds later and I get the uh, XP for assist. So now because of the low survivability of aircrafts, it's very tempting for anybody to just try to at least deal a little bit of damage, even if you can't take an aircraft out, because most likely is that aircraft's going to go down pretty soon, and most uh, players won't say no to some easy earned experience points. Once he's down. Nice. That's three months he's down. Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, just get in. There we go. Oh yeah, can you... Um... No, no, no. I can change. No, 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 no. It's good that you are anti air. It's good. Let's go. So another reason why it is really hard to fly is that uh, you have the uh, surface to air damage bonus, meaning that if you just deal damage to an aircraft from the ground, you are going to get points for it. Therefore, it's very rewarding to use anti air, at least until uh, the enemies realize that there is no point flying in the area where you're at. So yeah, a single Burster Max can of course not take out this amount of aircraft, but to anybody that has an anti-air unit in an area like this, this will give you very easy points. And I think that is one of the things that most people react on, how, and I pointed this out myself in the past quite a lot, how it's very easy to use anti-air compared to how much uh, time and dedication it takes to be combat effective in an aircraft. But the thing about anti-air is that anti-air is only part of the problems you're facing as a pilot. And as an ESF pilot, one of the biggest deciding factors is whether or not you are focusing on ground targets or if you are focusing on air. Because if you are only focusing on other aircrafts when you're flying yourself, most of the ground troops are not gonna really pay attention to you unless you are a direct threat to them. But again, this is something that also has a lot of exceptions. Now I found that um, my own biggest flaw when I face uh, or when I'm focusing on air to ground is that uh, I always underestimate tanks. I don't know why, I, I get killed by tanks all the time, basically every day if I fly with rocket pods. And the main reason for that is that once I know that I'm good on my acquisition timer and I know that I have enough resources to pull another ESF, I start flying really, really risky. I just like doing that. And if somebody gets a good Dalton shot or tank shot or a dumb fire shot on me and kills me, then I'd say they probably deserve that kill. However, dedicated anti-air and lock-ons I'm not too keen to die to, and I'd rather bail out and try my chances uh, on the ground. So now, the situation for Liberator pilots and Galaxy pilots, of course, is very different uh, compared to what it's like for ESFs. They are a much bigger target, and most of the situations they are a much easier target however they do take a lot more damage so you have to hit them a lot more and i think there was a pilot from madison if i'm not mistaken his name is dreadnought that pointed out that um, the most dangerous anti-air unit for a liberator crew is an ap tank nope. oh. now even though and i gotta admit i don't spend all that much time using anti-air units I think they are fairly easy to use and very effective 
and after the bursters were nerfed at range, a lot of people uh, considered them useless. And I don't really know wh where they get that from. You can still do a lot of damage with the burster max before infantry players even render for a pilot. Well, except for the max itself, of course. And I honestly don't know if turrets are better at range than burster maxes. But please share that information in the comment section below this video if you know anything about it. But uh, as I said earlier, I do not use anti-air units that much. And even when I'm on the ground, I shoot down more aircrafts with a non-anti-air weapon than I do with an anti-air weapon. And when I finally do pull my burst to max in order to get rid of uh, the aircrafts in my surrounding area, normally I kill a lot more infantry with it than aircrafts. Because uh, the moment I've uh, started shooting on aircrafts with it, they just seem to either die or disappear. And this kind of points out some of the things that I like to cover a lot on my channel. It is to use a weapon or a vehicle for anything else but its non-intended purpose. And the air is not an exception. It just presents a different kind of challenge. And so now to one of the biggest nightmares for any pilot. Lock-ons. The flares have been bugged for quite a while. It's uh, been really irritating and uh, it uh, really changes up the balance in the game but uh, i recently learned something from a pilot or from two pilots actually from conry it's uh, ginger and jennifra and it's how to do this dodge uh, lock-on missiles it works both against air-to-air -air lock-ons and against uh, ground uh, lock-ons but uh, in most cases i've uh, known this for a couple of days it is not very effective because in most situations, the time it takes to position yourself in order to perform this maneuver, it's already too late. And that is assuming you can even locate from where you're being locked on within a second or two. And you can never know if you're being locked on from another direction at the same time. But I still want to give a big thanks to Jennifer and Ginger for sharing this information. Now Ginger has made a video where he explains exactly how to do this. And I really recommend you to check it out. The link to his video will be in the description. Please tell him I said hi and thanks and um, good luck dodging lock-ons. So this is all for this video. I uh, wish you the best of luck flying. It, it can be a painfully challenging experience from time to time. But uh, when you succeed and when you do good, it's uh, a lot of fun. So uh, thank you for watching and bye for now.